welcome to video 12. We will be talking about maps and IP and max search. Both of these features are very useful and build on the fact that NetXMS is fully topology aware. We mentioned before that when you add a node into NetXMS it completely discovers it, including its IP routing table, MAC IP binding table, etc. And this is what maps actually use. There are two types of maps within NetXMS which is a custom map, which is a manually built map, and an automatic layer 2 and automatic layer 3 maps. Let's first look at the automatically built maps. When you select an automatic layer 2 map, let's give it a name, you have to give it a seed node, and this seed node is used as a base node from which the NetXMS builds out the topology. In my case I will give it our main rec switch. And it will take a little bit for the map to build on the background, on the server. My map has been built, it took about 10 seconds. And you can see it's fairly messy. So let's, first of all, you can see all the names of every single link that's connected. And in our topology we are actually using LHCP, so we have multiple uplinks for every single node here. So let's switch the link names off. And let's display the objects as small labels. And you can now see that the map is much more viewable and gives you much more information. So you can see there is a mesh of switches here and then some more nodes which are connected to the core switches. And again, this map has been built completely automatically without me giving NetXMS any data. This is actually built from the neighbor relationships that NetXMS builds when it learns your topology, such as LLDP data, MAC tables on switches, etc. Since we are looking at the layer 2 map, we are mostly talking about switches here. Every time I refresh the map, it's going to rebuild it differently, but this can be turned off using layout and disabling automatic layout. So let's look at this map when I've customized it a little bit to my liking, and let's turn off the labels again. So you can see this is an automatic map, so if one of these connections actually went down, or if I added a new connection, NetXMS would automatically add it and draw it on this map. With layer 3 maps, it's the same principle. So if I create an automatic layer 3 map IP topology, I have to give it a root node from which the map will be built. In this case, I already have a map prepared, so let me open it for you. So this is an automatic layer 3 map of the demo topology which I'm showing you here. You can see that this map is fairly big and again this was built completely automatically by NetXMS from the IP routing tables which it had learned from every single router in our topology. You can see that it even properly builds an ECMP equal cost multipath route. If you have a big topology like this you might want to go into map properties and adjust the topology discovery radius. By default it's only 5 hops. You could also look around these options and try how they influence your maps for you. One thing which I would like to show you is if you go into layout, there is an option here to always fit layout to screen. If I have a bigger map like this and I disable this option and refresh the map, you can see that it can be built as an extremely big map. So I have two options here. There is an automatic zoom to fit on my screen, which would do this, and if I refresh it, you can see that it zooms it properly, but everything is small in my particular map here. So what I would rather do is reset the zoom level and force the layouting to only fit the layout to my screen, and then refresh the map. And you can see again the map is automatically rebuilt on every refresh, but I could disable this if I wanted to. You can also manually add any objects you like onto the automatic maps by simply clicking add object. I could then add any object here which I want, so let's do the NetXMS server which I'm working on. And then I can connect it manually to any other node on this map. So if I drag it over here, and let's just for example connect it to this router. And you can see that the map has now been properly rebuilt and my NetXMS server is happily sitting connected here to this router. And on every rebuild 
it will still be properly connected and placed onto the map. This way, if you are missing topological information about certain nodes, you can manually connect them and the map will rebuild itself to the proper topological layout. The last map type is a custom map. When you create a custom map, you will not specify a seed node since it's not built automatically. And then you can do whatever you want on this map and lay out all of your stuff as you see fit. A really useful example here is a map like this, where you have a picture of your actual rack or technical room and you just place node status information onto the map. This can be achieved by switching the display object status to status icons only. Another very useful feature of NetXMS, which builds on the topological awareness of NetXMS, is the IP and MAC address search. Let me demonstrate. If I have no idea where a certain IP address is connected inside of my network, I can simply give NetXMS the IP address, for example this is my computer which I'm working on right now, and it will show me directly where this computer is connected in my network based on its IP address. So I can see that I'm connected to this switch on port 4. The connection type is direct, so my computer is the only device connected to this port. If both of the devices are actually within NetXMS, you will see the node's IP address and what interface it is connected, and the, the switch, and where on the switch it is connected. But NetXMS can also give you information if it doesn't know exactly where the node is connected. Let me demonstrate. In this example, this particular server is connected indirectly into this switch. This simply means that there is another unmanaged switch or something that NetXMS doesn't apologically know between my node and the last managed switch which NetXMS manages. Another very useful feature is the MAC address search. If you do not know the IP address of a node, or for example if you are an ISP which has PPPoE customers, so you only know the MAC address of the particular node, NetXMS can easily find this node as well. In this example again I have a node connected directly to the interface 39 of my switch, but it doesn't have an IP address since it's a PPPoE client. NetXMS can even pull data from your wireless access points. So for example for this client I can see that it's a PPPoE client connected to my access point on this particular SSID and the connection type is wireless. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Thank <laughs> you.